Hey everyone, I'm Travis Spivey, joined with my son, Jordan Spivey, and if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss on any of our awesome science videos. Also, scan the QR code in the top left corner of the screen to contact us and explore more of our awesome content and material. In today's video, we will discuss the relationship between the physical factors and adaptations of organisms to their environment. So, so let's, let's do this. Our learning target for today is, I can evaluate claims, evidence, and reasoning of the relationship between the physical factors and adaptations of organisms to their environment. So what is an adaptation? An adaptation is any inheritable trait that helps an organism such as a plant or animal survive and reproduce in its own environment. Any number of characteristics can vary among individuals of a given species. Some may be larger, hairier, fight off infections better, or have smaller ears. These characteristics are largely determined by their genes, which are passed down from their parents and subsequently passed down to their own offspring. Some of these characteristics or traits provide competitive advantages like speed, strength, or attractiveness. If those traits are particularly helpful, individuals with those traits will produce more offspring than those without. Over generations, the number of individuals with that advantageous trait or adaption will increase until it becomes a general attribute of the species. Let's dive even deeper into adaptations. An adaptation can be structural, meaning it is a physical part of the organism. An adaptation can also be behavioral, affecting the way an organism responds to its environment. An example of a structural adaptation is the way some plants have adapted to life in dry, hot deserts. Plants called succulents have adapted to this climate by storing water in their short, thick stems and leaves. Also, in desert plants, the stomata is open during night. During night, desert plants absorb carbon dioxide and form an intermediate. Then during daytime when the stomata is closed to prevent loss of water, they use this stored carbon dioxide to perform photosynthesis to provide them with energy to survive. Seasonal migration is an example of a behavioral adaptation. Gray whales migrate thousands of kilometers every year as they swim from the cold Arctic Ocean in summer to the warm waters off the coast of Mexico in winter. Gray whale calves are born in the warm southern water and then travel in groups called pods to the nutrient-rich waters of the Arctic. Adaptations that develop in response to one challenge sometimes help with or become co-opted for another. Feathers were probably first adaptations for tactile sense or regulating temperature. Later, feathers became longer and stiffer, allowing for gliding and then for flight. Such traits are called exaptations. An exaptation is an adaptation that developed for one purpose but is used for another. Some traits, on the other hand, lose their function when other adaptations become more important or when the environment changes. Evidence of these traits remain in a vestigial form, reduced or functionless. Whales and dolphins have vestigial leg bones, the remains of an adaptation that their ancestors used to walk. Humans have vestigial organs such as wisdom teeth, appendix, and their coccyx bone. This indicates that these organs were once useful for us, but are no longer useful for us today. Adaptations often develop in response to a change in the organism's habitat. A famous example of an animal adapting to a change in its environment is English peppered moth, or it's called the Biston bitularia. Prior to the 19th century, the most common type of this moth was cream colored with darker spots. Few peppered moths were gray or black. With the tree bark being lighter, it was easier for cream colored moths to blend in. Gray or black, peppered moths were easier to spot by birds and therefore were eaten at a higher rate than the cream colored moths. As the Industrial Revolution changed the environment, the appearance of the pepper moths changed. The darker colored moths, which were rare, began to thrive in the urban atmosphere. Their dark color blended in with the trees, which were stained by industrial pollution. Birds couldn't see the dark moths as well, so they ate the cream colored moths instead, which are not easier to see. The cream colored moths began to make a comeback after the United Kingdom passed laws that limited air pollution. This law caused the color of the tree bark to gradually become lighter, helping the cream colored moths have a camouflage adaptation advantage again. Sometimes an adaptation or set of adaptations develop that split one species into two. This process is known as speciation. Marsupials in Oceania are an example of adaptive radiation, a type of speciation in which species develop to fill a variety of empty ecological niches or jobs. Marsupials are mammals that carry their developing young in pouches after a short pregnancy. They arrived in Oceania before the land split from Asia. Placental mammals, animals that carry their young to term in the mother's womb, came to dominate every other continent but not Oceania. 
Koala bears, for instance, adapted to feed on eucalyptus trees, which are native to Australia. The extinct Tasmanian tiger was a carnivorous marsupial and adapted to the niche or jaw filled by big cats like, like tigers on other continents. The cichlid fish found in many of Africa's lakes exhibits another type of speciation, sympatric speciation. Sympatric speciation is the opposite of physical isolation. It happens when species share the same habitat. Adaptations have allowed hundreds of varieties of cichlids to live in Lake Malawi. Each species of cichlid has a unique specialized diet. One type of cichlid may eat only insects, another may eat only algae, another may feed only on other fish. Organisms sometimes adapt with and to other organisms. This is called co-adaptation. Certain flies produce nectar to appeal to hummingbirds. Hummingbirds in turn have adapted long, thin beaks to extract the nectar from certain flowers. When a hummingbird goes to feed, it inadvertently picks up pollen from the anthers of the flowers, which is deposited on the stigma of the next flower it fishes. In this relationship, the hummingbird gets food while the plant's pollen is distributed causing pollination. The co-adaptation is beneficial to both organisms. Mimicry is another type of co-adaptation. In mimicry, one organism has adapted to resemble another. The harmless king snake, sometimes called the milk snake, has adapted a color pattern that resembles the deadly coral snake. This mimicry keeps predators away from the king snake. The mimic octopus has behavioral as well as structural adaptations. This species of octopus can copy the look and movements of other animals such as sea snakes, flatfish, jellyfish, and shrimp. The orchid mantis is another great example of mimicry. It is known by various common names including walker flower mantis and orchid mantis. It is one of the seven species of praying mantis that mimic the look and behavior of flowers. They are known to grab their prey with blinding speed. Since prey think they are flowers, they never suspect these predators and are ambushed before they can even know they are in danger. In summary, certain adaptations help organisms to better survive and reproduce in their environment. Organisms that lack these adaptations tend to survive and reproduce less, often leading to their extinction. In other words, either adapt and adjust to their environment to survive or become extinct. And that's our video for today. Now let's test your knowledge to see how proficient you are with relating the physical factors and adaptations of organisms to their environment by taking our video quiz. Use your electronic device to get the QR code at the top right of the screen or you can click the link in the description box below the video to take the quiz. Remember, 80% or higher for proficiency, record your results on your proficiency sheet, and if you don't get it the first time, you, you better, better keep, keep going, going because it's not over until you win. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, click that bell icon, and also scan the QR code to contact us and support more of our awesome content and material. Peace and have, have a positive, positive productive day. Too much iron in your blood.